Mexico! Arriba, arriba! We're on our way to Picacho and we're just cruising. When we're canoeing at night, we see so many bats. You know what that means? We're cooking and sleeping in the canoe. Just cooked the shit. We're in a canoe, we're hungry, let's eat. We bought a couple fireworks and we're gonna light them in the canoe. Usually I'm the sensible one, but when it comes to fireworks, light them up, baby. Holy crap, the canoe's on fire. My name is Brian, and this is my best buddy. And his name is Brian too. Out of all the water in the world, only 1% is fresh water. And we're gonna explore all of it. This time we're canoeing the Colorado River, all the way from Colorado down to the border of Mexico. And we're gonna use the same old canoe. We're at a place called Walter's Camp. We're just taking a break to clean out some of our stuff, reorganize, repack. From now on, we're only bringing the essentials. Everything in our food barrel, due to the heat, has been rotting. And I mean, we can't mix in our new supplies with the rotten food because that's just a recipe to get sick. So I'm emptying it out. I'm going to wash it out. We're going to stock up with some more supplies here. and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, eat what we can quickly, because it's all going to go bad. A little shot of biodegradable soap in there, just to disinfect whatever might be growing, or I don't know, what whatever else happens fermenting, or something. Not the good kind of fermenting. It should be smooth sailing from here to Imperial Dam. It's only about 40 miles. Uh, we're basically on the home stretch. One more little portage, and then straight on to Yuma. I can already smell the tequila in Mexico. Hey Brian, take a look at what the Colorado River's become. Well, you don't actually have to worry about that that much because this isn't really the Colorado. This is just a little inlet that oh. we pulled off to. Remember, we came in over there. All we got to do is get out there, and like they say, the the current should be flowing a bit better. Because this is dead water. I know this is dead water, but we don't have to worry about that. Is this why you never show me the maps? Yeah, pretty much. But. Don't worry, just down there, and then it's 40 miles straight on to uh, to the next dam. And well, how uh, just down there? Those mountains? Well, way before the mountains. You see where the point comes out right there? Oh, okay, yeah. That's where the Colorado, the real Colorado, starts again. And uh, well, just we're hop good. in there, and yeah, they, they say it's about four miles an hour, the flow. So we should be good for, for a good bit. I mean, we're going to hit another dam, so the water's going to calm down at one point or another. And it looks like a little tailwind, buddy. Smooth current, smooth tailwind, smooth sailing. What a hell of a way to end a trip, man. Yeah. All right. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, man. All the way to Mexico. One, two, three. Here we go, Mexico! Arriba, arriba! I can smell the tequila, buddy. We're on our way to Pikachu and we're, we're tracking great distance after the last dam. The current's going great and finally the wind has died down enough and, and we're just cruising. It feels so good to be on the water.
it's beautiful out here. How are you feeling, bud? I'm feeling a little tired right now. Uh, we should have pulled off about two hours ago, but we cannot find camping to either side of the river. Although, I'm pretty impressed that uh, up until this close to the finish line, the Colorado River has been nothing but great scenery. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't stop getting like any better or any worse. It just stays amazing. You know what I mean, bro? That's incredible. Yeah, I know. At one point, I thought the most beautiful thing I saw was the Grand Canyon, and then it just kept surprising me the whole way down. Even from since day one. Since day one, you're right. I'd say, you know, the Grand Canyon. Yeah, it's spectacular. It's, the Grand Canyon's awesome really spectacular but everything else in its own way is just as good it's just as spectacular it's such a I don't know it's very different from any other trip we've done yeah it's very very cool it's very very beautiful you know what's really nice what? is that there is no more boats out right now when you paddle into the sunset all those motorboats go home and do what they do. And we got the river to ourselves. And that is a beautiful thing. When we're canoeing at night, we see so many bats. You know what that means? That means there's a shitload of bugs in these bushes. Yeah. You know what that means? We're cooking and sleeping in the canoe. We haven't found anywhere to camp in quite some time. As you can see, it's all vegetation. All we're seeing is bats to either side of the river, which means everything is full of bugs and there's nowhere to pull up. It's just reeds and vegetation. And we don't want to camp in the bugs on either side. So we're going to do a little dinner cook in the canoe and probably camp in the canoe again. Sleeping in the canoe, take two. See if this time it works. Bringing it to a boil part isn't the difficult one. It's gonna be simmering it for a while. Just cooked the shit. We're in a canoe, we're hungry, let's eat. We're constantly trying to beat these headwinds and the heat. So usually we'll end up paddling into the night and eating out of the canoe. And dinner usually consists of power bars or anything with a little protein, peanut butter, something simple. But uh, tonight we decided to cook chili in the canoe. Okay, what and I'll that? do is I'll get the bag out of the barrel that has everything for the chili. That has everything, because we're yeah. doing chili tonight, right? Yeah. So I'll get you the bag, I'll get you all that. Um, and a bottle of propane. And I'll make you a cooking surface. Yeah. And then you could cook and I film. We take turns. Sounds good. So just hang on tight and try not to lose the camera. Uh. Brian starts to set up uh, set up a cooking area for me and uh, and he washes the dishes. Ooh, scrubby. Which is always nice, but Brian decides to wash them in the river. By a degradable soup. As fun as that is, everybody's been telling us the whole way down that this water has become toxic. And so he was snarling when after he finished washing the dishes, I used some of our fresh water to rinse off 
all of our uh, <laughs> all of our pots and pans and bowls and spoons. Okay, well, what if we run out of drinking water because you used it, you wasted it on splashing it into the river? Then we still have water purification tablets and a stove to boil it, so we're all right. But if we're just gonna rinse things, we're not gonna just rinse them in the river. I don't know, you saw the color of this river. <laughs> it's not clean anymore. He'll appreciate it when he doesn't get the scoots. You know, beaver fever. You've all heard about it. We've got some uh, makeshift chili with beans. We have some kind of salsa that'll substitute for tomato sauce. And for the vegetable part of our meal, we have corn. That's perfect. Now we have a full pot. Get our spoon out. Mix it all up nice and good. You want everything to be mixed up well because you want all the ingredients to blend together. Even if they are the crappiest ingredients we have. You always want to start bringing it to a boil right away. That way we'll get the flavors mixing together nicely. And the bringing it to a boil part isn't the difficult one going to be simmering it for a while. Especially with Brian back there because Brian I know is hungry and he doesn't like to wait for things to simmer so we'll just have to see what we can do with this. See all the nice bubbles coming up there? We got, we got a good boil going on. So now it's time for, for the tricky part with the Alpine stove. The tricky part with the Alpine stove is the simmer. That really doesn't work so well. <laughs> have to be real gentle, but oh, I can smell some cooked on going on here. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, we want to get a stir going. Just cooked the shit. We're in a canoe. We're hungry. Let's eat. You don't need to burn it to shit. Just a little hotter. That oh, gonna you, take, you, how long is that going to take? Half hour? We don't need a half hour cookout right now. Oh, it's not gonna be a half hour. We just wanna reduce it a little bit because right now it's like soup. Like, dude, this, this isn't chili. I don't care. Are you not hungry? I'm getting there, I'm getting there, definitely. Just we'll let it cook for another five minutes. Okay, well, our chili is looking pretty close to done. It doesn't really matter if it's done or not, but we're hungry. Let's eat, right, bud? Yeah, man. The wind's picking up. We gotta get back to business. Here. Let's, go. Yeah. Let's go. We'll take it off there. There you go, bud. Nice chili. Thank you. Sweet, dude. creation but far from my worst at least there's no sand in this one awesome this is actually really good so as far as canned food goes is it all right this passed the test dude this passed the test there's no sand and we're still tracking distance well, let's chow down because the headwind's starting to pick up and we gotta, I don't know, either paddle into it or get off the water. Sounds good, buddy. Bon appetit. All right, let's eat. Paddling into the night and after nightfall, it's really hard to find campsites. I mean, it's hard to find campsites during the day because you either have rock face or such thick shrubbery that you can't pull the canoe up or you can't even get yourself through it. So it's really hard for us to find these places. We got fortunate enough and we found this abandoned beach. We've been paddling through the night. We cooked on the boat because we can't find anywhere to camp. The shorelines are, well, when you can't see anything, there's nowhere to camp. So we found this place that we hope 
we hope it's abandoned, but there's all these huts. We're on this beach. I have no idea where this is. But we're both exhausted, so we're camping here tonight. It's not that it's cold out, but I'm taking out my sleeping bag anyways. I just want a little more padding to sleep on. Sleeping bag as bed. Life preserver as pillow. Sand on the side. And this is the sweet spot. I can't believe we couldn't find anywhere to camp for so long, can you? Oh, that was real. That. Sounds like a donkey, but I bet you it's a sheep. I bet you it's one of them mountain sheep. That's why I sleep with the paddle right beside me. In case one of them donkeys gets out of control. Are you staying up for a bit or what? Not maybe for a little bit. You're a chain. <sighs> Good night, buddy. Good night, brother. We bought a couple fireworks, and we're gonna light them in the canoe. Usually I'm the sensible one, but when it comes to fireworks, light them up, baby. Great, now the canoe's on fire. We weren't sure where we were camping at night. It was too dark to tell, and we could kind of see that it looked like a beach with picnic tables and stuff. And then when we woke up in the morning, we realized that uh, it was actually, you know, it was actually a little part of this Pikachu campsite. You hear that? That's our natural wildlife alarm clock. They do not come with snooze buttons. Those <laughs> chirping birds. Oh, we got another one right there, the sun that cooks you. No snooze button for that either. But I'm gonna pack everything up. Life jackets, great pillows. I'm gonna pack everything up, and then when Bry gets up, we could hit the water right away and try and track some distance. Cause we're getting close. Hear that? That's donkeys. We actually woke up with two donkeys right over there in our campsite. So I guess like mother nature has its own alarm clock for us. I mean, we can't hit snooze to the bugs, the birds, the donkeys and the sun that wake us up at five in the morning, but at least we're up in time to track distance. Are we close to Mexico? We're really close to Mexico. We're about 20 miles from our last dam. And from there, maybe another 40 miles to Mexico. I don't know, we're pretty damn close. We're so close to the finish line and I mean, we're, we're both getting so excited. We probably only have a couple nights left in this trip and we've almost made it. We know right now that we are gonna make it. As we're chopping down river, we saw a little fireworks stand and uh, me and Brian, right away, we, we had to stop. We, we gotta light some fireworks in the canoe. We'll see what happens with this. I don't know. It, this might be one of our dumber ideas, but Adams is totally on board, so let it ride. Usually I'm the sensible one, but uh, when it comes to fireworks, uh, light them up, baby. 
We're almost near the finish line and we're gonna party like it's the 4th of July. Yeah, baby! Fireworks! Okay, yeah. push us out, push us out! Back on your butt. Here's your nose. Don't turn it back! So we get out in the water, oh, we light this firework here, like, I don't even know, like, you don't read the instructions, because if you read the instructions, you're going to scare yourself and you're going to realize something bad is going to happen. So we just light it. It was a lot of fun, there were sparks going everywhere, we were having a good time. Sure enough, uh, the wind started blowing a bit and uh, we both started to get burned a little bit. At first it was just Brian and he, he jumped out of the boat and uh, then the wind kind of shifted a little bit and I started to get burned so I jumped out of the boat. The firework falls over and starts burning the side of the boat. So I have to get back to the boat and grab the firework and throw it out of the boat as it's still going. I throw it in the water, I think it's gonna go out. It's still burning. The, the stupid thing wouldn't stop. <laughs> oh, thank God. Eventually it stopped, we were okay, the boat wasn't burning. That was awesome! We survived it. <laughs> yeah, baby. Holy shit. Whoa, that was a close one. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, but... That was really good. Let's okay. go get some more. Yeah. <laughs> a good time was had by all. Next time we'll try C4. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> of course. We are so dumb. Gotta keep it stupid. <sighs> well, At least we have uh, no holes in the boat. Time to go set up camp, I guess, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Nice and cold for that. Perfect. I don't think we'll be having a fire tonight. <laughs> we just had it. <laughs> we wasted all of our fire in two minutes. <laughs> that was a good two minutes. 